Hello and welcome to the Raspberry Pi tutorial by me, the Raspberry Pi Guy. Today I have a very exciting video because, as you are seeing right now, I'm going to show you guys and girls how you can play full, high quality PC games on your Raspberry Pi. To do this, we're going to stream video games over a local network from a different computer using an awesome program called Moonlight. Moonlight uses NVIDIA's GeForce Experience software to allow you to stream your entire collection of Steam games from one device to another. And so in this tutorial, I'm essentially going to show you how to make your own custom Steam box out of a Raspberry Pi. Previously, this application was Java-based, and it was also called Limelight, but it has been rewritten in C, renamed, and is now significantly better. So stay tuned, and in a few commands, you'll be up and playing your favorite titles on any screen you want in your house. Here is what you'll need in this video. So first off, you'll of course require a Raspberry Pi. Streaming games is quite an intensive task, and so this tutorial will work best with the quad-core Raspberry Pi 2. It will work with an older B+, or Raspberry Pi 1, however, from my experience, gaming is noticeably more laggy. I'll be using a Pi 2 in this video. Next, ensure that you have the latest version of Raspberry from the foundation, and also see to it that your Pi is connected to the internet. I'll be using Ethernet, however, Wi-Fi should do just fine. If you are using Wi-Fi and haven't got it set up, check out my previous tutorial here. Note also that you'll need the usual Raspberry Pi peripherals, such as a mouse, keyboard, screen, etc. As you will be playing games, you may also want a USB controller, such as an Xbox 360 one. These work with Moonlight and you may prefer to use them, however I will be sticking to my gaming keyboard and mouse. Next you'll need a Windows PC on the same network that is capable of running computer games. This is what will be streaming onto your custom Raspberry Pi Steam box. Now Moonlight, the software we're using on the Pi, is an open source implementation of NVIDIA's GameStream. This is software that was created originally for the NVIDIA Shield. Consequently, this means that the program that we'll be using on the streaming PC is the GeForce Experience software, and this requires an NVIDIA GTX graphics card. So in order to follow along with this tutorial, your computer will need a GTX 600 series or above, such as a 700 or 900 series. And that's all you'll need in this video. With that out of the way, let's set up the PC so that it's ready to stream games. Now boot up your computer, log in, and open up a web browser. The first thing you'll have to do is install NVIDIA's GeForce Experience software. To do this, browse to www.geforce.co.uk forward slash geforce hyphen experience forward slash download. Remember that all of the links and commands will be in the description below. Once there, hit download on the latest version and run through the installation of GeForce Experience. After it has finished downloading and installing, launch it. So currently you should be seeing an interface similar to this one. If we look here on the Games tab, you can see all of your games. These are the ones that you're going to be able to stream to your Pi. Now before you can set up streaming, there are a few things you'll need to do. Firstly, you'll need to log in and create an NVIDIA account, or use your Google one like so. After you've finished logging in, you'll need to ensure that your GeForce driver is up to date and so go onto the Drivers tab and check for any updates. Once this is all done, reboot your PC so that all of your changes can take effect. Once your PC has rebooted, go back onto GeForce Experience. If you go onto the Shield tab, you should now see that it says you're ready to stream. Lastly, we just have to check the Shield Preferences to make sure that it's only searching on the local network. Do this by clicking Preferences, Shield, and then hit On My Network. Now leave GeForce Experience running. We will come back to it later. Just quickly before we move on to setting up the Raspberry Pi, and in order to save time later, I'll just show you how to find out your Windows PC's IP address for when it comes to pairing your Pi to the computer. To do this, open up a command line. This can be done by typing CMD in the search bar of the Windows button. And now just type the command ipconfig. After this, depending on whether you're using Ethernet or Wi-Fi, where your IP address is may actually vary. What you're looking for is the IPv4 entry. So here it says mine is 192.168.1.61. Make sure you make a note of this for later. Now let's set up the Raspberry Pi for game streaming. First off, plug everything into your Pi. Connect a screen, keyboard, mouse, controller if you wish, and plug in Ethernet or a Wi-Fi dongle. Then connect power. 
log into your Pi and don't worry as you do not need to boot into the desktop environment. Now Moonlight, the game streaming software, requires a lot of other software and programs to be installed in order for it to function properly and actually install itself. This all gets rather complicated and so to speed up the whole process I've written an installation script that will download everything for you and set up the Pi for game streaming. Download this with the command wget raw.githubusercontent.com forward slash the hyphen raspberry hyphen pi hyphen guy forward slash game underscore stream forward slash master forward slash install dot sh. As I said before, this command will be in the description below. So now you have to actually run the installation script. To do this, type sh install dot sh and the program will start to grab everything you need off of the internet and compile the software that we'll be using. This little automated wizard will take quite some time, around an hour and a quarter. So let's fast forward to when the script finishes. Now that the script is finished, we can get on with the actual game streaming. First, let's change into the directory that has all of the installed game streaming software. Do this with the command cd game underscore stream. Now you need to pair your Pi to your PC. To do this, type moonlight pair and then the IP address of your computer, the one that we jotted down a little while ago. For me, the command is moonlight pair 192.168.1.61, and this will generate a four digit pin. Once you have it, go back to the GeForce Experience software on your Windows PC, and you should see that a little shield dialog box is opened, asking for the pairing key. Type that same four digit pin in and hit connect. You should see that your Pi displays the fact that both it and the PC are now paired. Finally, we can get to the video game streaming. Now that everything is connected up, you can display all of the streamable games by typing Moonlight List. You should see your PC's game library appear. If you don't see anything, then you haven't scanned for games via GeForce Experience. This will most likely not happen to the majority of people, but if you can't see any of your games, go to Preferences on NVIDIA software and then hit Games. If you press check now, it will scan your computer for all of your available titles. Anyway, back to the Pi. So by typing Moonlight List, I now know that I can stream everything from Watch Dogs to the actual Steam app. As most of my games are on Steam, let's launch the Steam option. This will stream Steam's big picture mode, and so it is perfect if you want to play games on your sofa. The Moonlight program has a lot of different options, and you can set all of these up exactly how you would like. For example, you can change what resolution you want the Pi to have streamed to it. To view all of these options, type Moonlight Help, and you can have a look through everything in the guide here. For most people though, the following command should work perfectly for launching a stream of Steam's big picture mode. Type Moonlight Stream 1080 30 fps app steam and then hit enter. You should see your Pi spring to life and start to display the Steam environment. Also note that you'll be able to see it on your gaming rig too. From my experimentation, I've found that 30 FPS is the most reliable. For me, some strange mouse lag starts appearing at 60 FPS. So now that you're accessing Steam via your Pi, you can get to the gaming. Use your keyboard or controller to move around the interface and select the game you want to play. Congratulations, you're now streaming full high quality PC games to your own Raspberry Pi Steam box. For the most part, this software is really good. Sure, the compression means that games will not look as good as if they're on your PC, but they are still very playable and enjoyable. As I said, I normally use a gaming keyboard for my games, however I realise that many of you will want to use USB controllers, such as Xbox 360 ones. If this is you, you may notice that your controller doesn't work exactly like you want it to, aka the buttons aren't matched properly. Do not fret, as Moonlight has you covered with that as well. You can make your own custom controller bindings, and I've created a little guide on how to do just that. When in the game stream directory, you can access it by typing nano howtomap.md or by looking at it in the GitHub repository in a web browser. It's a simple process and my information will tell you exactly how to do it. Voila, you now have a Raspberry Pi game streaming client. Happy gaming. And that is all for today's video. In this tutorial, I've showed you how to turn your own plain Raspberry Pi into a custom Steam box. When Valve actually gets around to releasing their own streaming hardware, it will be interesting to see how these pit against each other. Stay tuned for more Raspberry Pi tutorials, videos and information. Don't forget to like, subscribe and share, and until next time, bye!